What are the eight major causes of inflammation in the body which can lead to gut and hormonal imbalances? Well, this is what we're going to talk about in today's video. Here's Paul Tarth, a holistic nutritionist with over 10 years of experience helping you balance your gut, hormones and get the body of your dreams naturally. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, make sure to press the subscribe button and stay up to date with our latest videos. Now before we really get into the subject of inflammation, let's just talk about inflammation in general and inflammation in the body is not itself a problem unless it's chronic. So when we have you know, a bruise or we cut our hand for example or cut our finger, there will be inflammation because this is a natural process that the body uses to heal itself and that is called acute inflammation where the body goes through a healing process. The problem is, is when we get chronic inflammation where this can carry on for months and years and this kind of inflammation in the body is not a natural healthy thing to have and can cause illness and disease and this is what we're going to cover in today's video on what things can actually cause chronic inflammation in the body. Now an example of an autoimmune condition that can damage the human body, inflammation, chronic inflammation, would be something like thyroid Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune disease which affects your thyroid. And how this works is basically your immune system starts attacking your thyroid, attacking the cells that produce your thyroid hormones, and over time this can damage your thyroid to a point where it is permanently damaged, and then it cannot produce then enough thyroid hormones to facilitate everything that needs to be working healthily in your body to an optimal level. So for example, you know, your metabolism should be working to an optimal level. And if it isn't, then you can start gaining weight or your heart is beating naturally and properly as it should do. Or this can start being affected by too low thyroid hormones. Or for example, it could be your brain function. You don't think as clearly. It can also affect your bone health. So you start having uh, bone loss because your thyroid hormone isn't working properly. And this can all be down to something like Hashimoto's and this autoimmune disease. So thyroid inflammation from Hashimoto's is something we really need to deal with and get on top of because it can cause a lot of health issues. And if it comes to the worst case scenario, you then have to start taking thyroid medications for the rest of your life because your body cannot produce them anymore due to this chronic inflammation that's been going on probably many years. Now, Another example, another quick example would be something like heart disease. How does heart disease happen? Well, through eating an unhealthy diet, you get atherosclerotic plaque in your arteries that start to build up. And why are they there? Well, your body is trying to heal itself. It's trying to heal the damage that's happening to the lining of your arteries, the endothelial cells. And this chronic inflammation, which is caused typically by the foods that people eat, just carries on over time and over many years, it can lead to heart disease. So this is just another example of chronic inflammation. Okay, so the first one is animal meats. So unfortunately, there are still a lot of people in this world who think eating animal meat is a healthy thing to do, but it really isn't. And you know, we've seen many examples of that over the years, obviously working with clients and we've seen where they've gone from a animal foods diet, even when they've eaten organic, and I had one lady we worked with, for example, who ate an organic animal food diet, but really wasn't doing well, had constipation, had candida, was overweight, didn't feel good in her mind. And we got her off that diet, put her on a plant foods diet, low fat, high carbohydrate, lots of fruit, big change. Started losing weight, she had mental clarity again, her gut was it working better, she had better bowel movement, she had no constipation anymore because of the fiber that she was now eating and just a big transformation. And that's the thing with eating animal meats. There are a lot of issues with it. So it contains obviously cholesterol, which isn't great for your, your arteries. Yes, we do need cholesterol, but our bodies make its own cholesterol, so you don't need to be getting cholesterol from the foods that you eat. So cholesterol is one problem. Then there's the saturated fat content. These are not good for your heart health and the atherosclerosis that I just mentioned earlier. So really not good for your heart health or your brain health as well because that can lead to things like strokes because again, atherosclerotic plaque can line your arteries in your heart but it also can be in your brain as well which can lead to strokes. So really not a good thing. So as well as the cholesterol and the saturated fat meat, it hasn't got any fiber in it at all. No fiber whatsoever. So it can help you with your digestion in that in that regard. But plant foods, there's lots of fiber in plant foods, in fruits and vegetables. So when you're eating or replacing those plant foods with things like meat, you're really doing your gut a disservice. As well as that, with the high fat content of meat, 
that's not going to be working well for your gut because they found on a higher fat diet that your gut microbiome will actually get smaller than if compared to a plant foods diet where you can get more diversity of healthy gut bacteria. So that's another great reason not to be eating animal foods and in meat here in particular. Now another example of why animal meats are not good for your health is your kidney function. Now they did a, a study where they had an animal food meal, a meat meal, and they also had a plant food meal. And they got the volunteers to eat the animal foods and they monitored their kidney function. And they found that it started to get inflamed eating the animal food, in this particular case the meat. Then a bit later they got them to eat the plant foods meal, which was all plant protein, plant, plant foods, and there was no inflammation whatsoever. The animal foods caused the inflammation in the kidneys, whereas the plant foods meal, the plant foods meal compared to the animal foods meal, was causing no inflammation whatsoever. So another good reason to not be eating animal meats, no heart disease, we're not having kidney problems causing kidney inflammation. Of course, if you're doing it over a long period of time eating that kind of um, food, animal meats over months and years, then that's gonna to lead to chronic inflammation, which is what we're talking about here. It's going to cause a decline in kidney function over time. So really best avoided. The next one is dairy. And there are many people out there who haven't got the enzyme to break down the cow's milk. And this then causes problems in their digestion and inflammation. But not only that is a problem, you've also got the cow's hormones that are in the dairy products and especially cheese because it's concentrated. But you've also got the medication the cows are being given as well. You know, the injections the cows are being given, all those things like antibiotics all the dead white blood cells that are going around in that cow, they're gonna be in the milk and the, the dairy products as well. And you're gonna be eating that and consuming that. Well, that can cause chronic inflammation in your body. And as I alluded to earlier, we were talking about heart disease and the saturated fat and the cholesterol in the dairy, like the meat, that can contribute to atherosclerosis. And that's definitely something you want to avoid. So again, chronic inflammation over the months and years, long term, you really want to avoid dairy products as well. The next one is processed sugar. Yes, I love eating sugar. I adore sugar. I eat sugar every day. I don't know how much I eat. I eat lots and lots of sugar, but I'm not eating processed sugar. I'm eating sugar from whole food sources. So lots of fruits, vegetables I'm getting sugar from, but mostly lots of fruits. But that's really good for you. That's totally different to the refined sugars that we're going to be talking about here, where they're stripped of their fiber. They've got no vitamins. They've got no minerals. Basically, all you've got is the sugar. But that's not how nature intended us to eat sugar. We're supposed to eat sugar in whole food forms. And when you eat it as refined sugar, it goes into your body, you digest it. There's no fiber there to feed the friendly gut bacteria. That's not good. There's no vitamins and minerals to feed your body, to give you strong bones and to help you get health and be strong and have vitality. That's not good. All you've got is empty calories. Yes, the empty calories. I'm sure you've heard that term before. And that's basically what refined sugar is, empty calories. So we want to avoid refined sugar as much as possible because it will set the stage for chronic inflammation over the months and years if you're eating a lot of it in your diet. And if you're eating highly processed foods, drinking soda drinks, and all these kinds of things and cookies with lots of sugar in there, refined sugar. So this is another one we need to avoid because it can cause chronic inflammation in this unbalanced food state without all the other nutrients that we should be getting along with sugar. The next one is gluten. Now, most of us have heard about celiac disease and celiacs who can't touch any gluten whatsoever, even trace amounts it will make them ill because their body really reacts to it. It's allergic to it. But gluten isn't good for anybody. Now, let me give you an example. You eat gluten, you've got some gluten grains, you eat them, and in your gut, there is something called an enzyme called zonulin, and this will be triggered by the gluten and it'll open up the spaces in your gut lining. Well, this is not what you want because this can then lead to what we call leaky gut, and things then leak into your bloodstream from your gut, such as unwanted food particles, bacteria, all sorts of other things, which can then go into your bloodstream and that can lead to autoimmune disease because your immune system sees them going into your bloodstream and thinks, oh, that shouldn't be there. I need to get rid of it. So it starts to attack it. But then unfortunately, this can lead to attacks on parts of your body that, you're, that you don't want to happen because of these unwanted things coming into your bloodstream. So it's really important 
that we don't eat gluten. So there are many other foods that you can eat which don't have gluten in them and then cause you this potential real problem. Because if you do eat gluten, you can get chronic inflammation which can go over months and over many years and that can cause you serious health issues and autoimmune diseases for sure can come from eating gluten in your food. So this is definitely another one that you want to avoid. So the next one is refined grains. And of course we're talking about here things like white flour, um, white bread for example and by itself it's not good because it's devo devoid of any um, fiber in there lots of other um, nutrients have been taken out as well due to all the process that they've gone through and there's also additives that are often added to these products so lots of chemicals added to it so at the end of the day when you consume these products you're missing a lot of the nutrition in there you're missing fiber in there you're eating lots of chemicals in there really a recipe for disaster, recipe for chronic inflammation in your body. So these you definitely want to avoid as well. Here's a big one now, omega-6. So yes, you get omega-6 in a plant foods diet for sure. And this is why we recommend a low fat diet because no amount, high amount of fat is ever good for you, even if it's from plant foods. If you understand that we're predominantly carbohydrate eaters, carb eaters or carbivores, which is what we are, so we should be eating fruits, lots of fruits and vegetables. We shouldn't be eating lots of fat, but unfortunately in the world, there are still a lot of people out there who think that eating lots of fat is good for you. And one of these in particular is omega-6. Now, omega-6 is an essential fat as well as omega-3, and we do need them in our diet, but we only need them in relatively modest amounts, and we need them in a good ratio to each other. So if you're going to be eating lots of nuts and seeds, and some people eat oils as well, this is going to be way too much fat for you and this is going to cause an imbalance in your body. And we've seen it many times where we've had clients and they've done a, a plant foods diet and they've been eating oils, they've been eating lots of omega-6 in their diet and they have inflammation. And typically, for example, when there's a, a lady who has a problem every month and she has a heavy period and it's causing a lot of problems, when you lower that level of fat in the diet, typically omega-6, lower that level of fat, then things really do improve. And that's because it causes imbalances. Typically there's saturated fat as well going along with the omega-6 and it's just too much for the body and it causes inflammation and chronic inflammation if you're doing it over a longer term. So if you take a lot of that omega-6 out of your diet and just have what you need every day, then you can really get rid of that inflammation and things can really work much better. And this is what we see time and time again with the people that we work with when they lower their fat intake eat lots of fruits and vegetables with lots of antioxidants in them, things work so much better. They get rid of their aches and pains, their brain functions better, they have more energy, they lose weight, and it really does work well. So going low fat, going lower in your omega-6 intake, not including any oils in your diet as well, because oils don't really work for your health. The less you can eat, the better. And if you can get rid of oils completely, that's the most optimal way to, to do it because oils aren't there for your health. They're, they're not good for your health. Really, we're talking about nuts and seeds, maybe some avocado, but in modest amounts. So when you lower that omega-6 level and you align it with omega-3, with ratios like 4 to 1 down to 1 to 1 of 6 to 3 in your diet, and you're eating around 10, 15 or so percent of your total daily calories from your overall fat intake, then that's when things really start to work well. So the next one is corn. Now it's not the easiest food to digest and if I'm working with a client for example, I do not want them to be eating corn if they've got gut issues to resolve. Now that said, many people can eat corn and they don't have any particular problems with it. I would say for sure if you are eating corn, you do want to get the organic type of corn because if it's other corns, you don't know if it's GMO for example and we don't want to be going down that road. Now the next one is soy. Now, like corn as well, it can be difficult to digest for some people, so not everybody's going to be able to tolerate soy. And if you are going to eat it, then you're better off eating organic soy and not the other kind that we just alluded to earlier, the GMO, because it's not going to be good for you. Again, that can cause chronic inflammation. But again, soy can be a trigger for autoimmune. If you want to discover the strategies to help you balance your gut health, then grab a spot on our free online masterclass where you can learn the five steps that our clients use to balance their hormones naturally, lose between 10 and 50 pounds of excess weight without carbohydrate restriction and get the body of their dreams naturally. So the link for that is vibewithhealth.com 
forward slash training. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video.